Hey, welcome back to Everything Money. It's Seth and Paul. No Mo today. He is out uh, on vacation with his wonderful girlfriend, Nicole. Uh, we're talking about Fox A today, Paul. Now, this is, uh, we had some confusion because there's a Fox stock. This is Fox Television. Fox A is basically all the stuff not sold to Disney. It, it, it has Fox News, which um, has FS1, FS2, Fox Business, Big Ten Network, a bunch of other television stations. It's an interesting stock. This was an eight pillar stock, folks. I, um, I bought this last July, Paul. Uh, July 1st, 2020, was in the little book that beats the market. Which, uh, What'd you buy it at? I'll tell you right now. That's this book right now. And we've done specials on this book and my journey. If you want to check out on our video, on our, on our YouTube, um, you can check out my journey with my, of the last year for the little book. But I bought Fox A at $27. I bought five grand and I'm up 41% in the past year. Yeah, because it's 38 now. Look at that. So we're going to use our eight pillar analysis to look at this this stock. Paul, you have this in your holdings as well? I think I do, yeah. Yeah, this is, this is an interesting one. We're going to see how they match up using our eight pillar analysis, the fundamentals behind the stock price. And we'll go into Stock Analyzer and see what we should be paying for this, this company. It's probably pretty close. This is an interesting company. Paul, well, remember, eight pillars are not about buying a stock just because they have the eight pillars. It's about telling a story. We're trying to teach a process. We're trying to teach everybody how to fish. Eight pillars was just a method that I use which happened to one day just be, oh, I look at these eight things as a way of skimming and kind of screening a stock. If it's all eight pillars, it could be a buy. It could not be a buy. If it has, I've bought companies that have one pillar of eight. Mm -hmm. You know, Carnival Cruise Line at the time when I bought it was one pillar of eight. So remember, guys, this isn't just about go do this. We're trying to teach you how to fish. So let's go on with it. Go ahead, Mr. $22.6 billion market cap, 11.2 PE with a 16% profit margin. So we have two checks so far. A uh, half decent dividend. The dividend in the stock market is about 1.3%, and this is about 1.2, so 271 million. Now, Seth. Go ahead. What do I always say about dividends that everybody in this world misunderstands? Well, if you're new to investing, you, you know, you're probably attracted to some dividends. It sounds like free money. A lot of our patrons love dividend investing, but of I course, do too. I like dividends. And they love getting that for that free paycheck. But of course, if they don't have the free cash flow, Paul, as you know, you probably know this, you've heard this once or twice, <laughs> they can't pay you that dividend. We've seen some dividend traps. You've called on the show things like Geo Group that had some dividend traps, very high 9% dividend. They just straight up didn't have the money to pay. So we have to be cautious about this. Yeah, because what they can do a lot of times Seth is the company can issue debt to pay a high dividend to attract investors instead of actually having the cash to do so. So they paid $270 million. And just to let you know, in the last year, they had $2.4 in free cash flow. Plenty of money to pay that dividend. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, eight to one. All right. Uh, return on assets, return on invested capital, nothing special, nine and six and a half percent. But either way, we have two checks so far. Let's get the revenue growth over the past five years, which is pillar number three. Well, we don't have five years of information here. We have four but it's definitely higher. Check mark there. All right. So from 7.7 .7 billion to 12.44 billion. How about revenue growth? I'm sorry, profit, profit, profit. My apologies. 1.7 to 2.02. Check mark there. A little concerning that, that revenue's up, you know, so much, 70%, and profits only up 20%, if that. So mm -hmm. something to consider. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, shares outstanding is pillar number five, Paul. 620 million down to 589. Ooh. Check mark. So they are buying yeah. shares back. And I yeah. like the fact that they're buying shares back on a low PE. The PE was 11, I believe. Buying shares back is a good investment for the company because when they're buying their shares back, they're buying undervalued shares up. Shall we head to the balance statement? Yeah, but you want to explain them the software? Yeah, the software behind Paul is a part of, if you join our Patreon, you can get the Everything Money software. You get this tool, you get the A-pillar analysis, you get the stock analyzer tool coming out later this summer, you get a retirement calculator, so many more things coming out by the end of the year. You're automatically entered in our Tesla giveaway. We gave away one Tesla, we're giving away another one at 100,000 subscribers, which should be in the fall. So if you join the Patreon, you can feel less alone out there and you can talk to people, our community of 3,600 patrons all over the world like-minded, disciplined individuals who want to invest, like Paul and I. 80 cents a day, it's going to give you so much stuff, you're crazy not to sign up. Go ahead, Paul. So total current assets, are, a total current assets is basically cash on hand for all intents and purposes, 8.7 billion. And their total current liabilities, debts they owe right now, 2.99. Plenty of cash to pay off all their current debts. That's a check mark there. Okay, how about free cash flow, the granddaddy of them all? So guys, as part of my love for you, I've added a line to the investing section of the cash flow statement. <laughs> And I've given you 637 to 2.39. That's a check mark check. with an average of 1.6. Check, So 1.6 billion average 
times 20 equals 32 billion. Seth, what was the market yeah, cap? Yeah, the current market cap is 22.6 billion. Wow. This doesn't happen often, folks. So what we're defining is here, uh, Nate, um, what we're defining is we use pillar number eight to take that free cash flow. We multiply by a multiple to get our desired market cap. They want to pay for the whole company. You've come up with 32. The actual retail price of this company is 22. And explain, Paul, why you envision which again, I read this amazing book recently, and uh, why you, and they said the same thing. They envision you're buying the whole company, not just a ticker. Go into that a little bit. Yeah, so everybody, even when I was younger, I used to think, well, I'm just buying a ticker symbol. I'm watching it go up and down. No, you're buying a piece of a company. So when you're buying a piece of a company, assume you're buying the entire company. What would you pay for this? Entire, what would you pay to get this cash flow for the last four years and going forward, maybe whatever your projections are? What would you pay for that? What, that's what you have to ask yourself when you're buying a stock. I understand it sounds hard to grasp that situation because we're just buying tickers that go up and down, but there's so much more that goes to it. Shares outstanding. If they're increasing, they're diluting you. They're hurting you as an investor. Um, things like that, debt levels, which you haven't looked at yet. Growth potential. You have to factor all these things in. If you were buying a company, your neighbor's company, chop off five zeros, chop off six zeros. Mm -hmm. If you're going to buy a future cash flow, what would you pay for it? Because every investment is the present value of all the future cash flow, all the cash along the way and what you're gonna sell it for. We have created a stock analyzer tool that's included in our software. It is coming out in the month of July and we're gonna show it right now. It allows you to make your assumptions and tell you what you need to pay for the stock. Yeah, so let's pull it up. Yeah, so Fox A has, has come, recently come off the little book list, Paul, so I will not be buying this this week when it comes to rebuying my little book stocks, uh, probably because it had a 40 something percent gain last year. Um, which is pretty on par with the market as well. So, but either way, Paul, let's look at the stock analyzer. This is a key component, folks. After we learn this company might be intriguing buy, we will, we then have to learn what do we pay. It's currently at thirty six bucks. Is that a good price? I don't know. Most of you probably just invest by. Let's just buy and hope it goes up. But the stock analyzer tool will allow us to put in our assumptions, Paul, and come up with some reasonable price assumptions to see where we stand. Great. Now, here's the issue with our stock analyzer tool with the data. We show historical five and 10 year numbers. We don't have that with Fox. So you have, to, you have to do more research before you make your assumptions. It gives you your last one year and it probably could give you the last four years um, and something like that. It's just, you have to make these assumptions in here. So let's figure this out. Revenue growth. I'm gonna sit here and assume Fox is pretty big and I'm gonna assume 3% low end, 5% high end, middle end, 7% high end. Shares, they are buying shares back. Let's assume they keep shares the same. Let's assume they buy 1% back. Let's assume they buy 2% back. Profit margin. I'm going to assume their, their, their profit margin probably stays pretty similar. It just seems like a reasonable thing to assume. Mm -hmm. Who knows if I'm right or not. Free cash flow is a percentage of revenue. Let's go 16, 20, 16, 18, and 20. PE. I just think all companies to be conservative, call it 15 to start. And let's go high side and go 17. Mm -hmm. Price of free cash flow, 10, 12, 15. Desired return. What return do you want? On the low side, you should have a high return. On the high side, low return. Why is that? Because the more you pay for something, the lower your return is going to be. Mm -hmm. So when you're trying to be conservative, you have to assume you're getting a higher return. So 15, 12, 0.5, and 10%. You hit analyze. It's currently selling at $36 a share. This is going to give you six prices here. It's going to give you the low, middle, and high of the earnings multiple as well as the free cash flow multiple. It's to give you an idea of where the stock stands. So right now, of the six situations, four of them value the company higher than where it's currently at right now. And the two below are barely below it. So to me, I look at this going, yep, I want to take a lot closer look at this company because I'm putting in these assumptions and even my low assumptions are the only ones, my conservative assumptions, the only ones that have the price below and it's not that much more below. Mm -hmm. So to me, when you bought Fox at 26, that was a good discount to, to intrinsic value. Yeah, in March, this was a $42 stock. It's since, since dropped a smidge, so. And according to our high assumptions, this could be an $80, $90 stock, mm. right? On the middle assumptions, we're still talking about a 50% increase from today. So this is why the stock analyzer tool is great. It's not telling you go pay this price. It's just telling you, wait a second, this stock is selling for a pretty low mo number. We got to figure this thing out. This could have some potential here. Um, Nate, if you want to go over here to uh, the Everything Money software you get as a patron, as always, you can click on annual reports and jump on over to the most recent 10K 
for Fox and then and, and read to your heart's desire about the, all the information that we provide for you through our, our, our Patreon page. So, Paul, what's your final take on Fox? Say this is still an interesting company. This is, a, in our opinion, <laughs> this is one of our rare bangers, Paul. Get your oven mitts ready. I, I own the stock. I don't know if I'm, I have to do more research to see how I'm adding to it, but I look at it saying, hey, take a look at this thing because it, it has good potential. The fact that in this market, you can buy a company and you'd wonder why is this company selling for such a cheap amount? I mean, it's Fox. They have a bad rep as being Fox News and things like that. I mean, you got to remember though that Fox News is still a very, very big ch- popular. Yeah, very popular channel. So Big Ten Network. I mean, all these things are very good assets they have. I don't think it's something to ignore. Yeah, I would imagine they might gobble up some more college networks. Maybe. I mean, Big Ten started out slow, and now they just they're they're on all day, all night. They do every all, every sport. It's, it's a great channel. So. All right, that is our take on Fox A. I am selling this as part of my little book uh, portfolio, unfortunately, but I've, I've enjoyed the first. But why are you selling it as part of your portfolio? Well, because I have a process and yep. I'm sticking to it. So um, it's coming off the list and, um, and I'm up 41% and I'm very happy about buying this a year ago. So, all right, that's our take. Join the Patreon. You know I love you. And fondle that thumbs up on the way out. None of the smashing monkey. Just tickle like you tickle Paul. <laughs> See you.